This is the Parasound HCA 2205A, 5 channel amplifier. If you haven't seen it, my 60 second video documents the troubleshooting and repair where this amplifier was stuck in standby. This video is going to be more about preventative service and testing. So first I'm going to rebuild the protection board and then I'm going to rebuild one of the amplifier modules. I think arbitrarily I'm going to choose this one, which I believe is channel 1. After rebuilding, I'll set up the bias. I'll do some sine wave and square wave testing on the scope. I'll check the output power to make sure it meets spec, and then we'll do a sound test. This is the protection board. I'll leave this installed until I'm ready to complete the work. Really, this just has 10 remaining electrolytics for me to replace. These five larger gray ones here, and these five smaller gray ones here. I've already replaced a few capacitors here, and this one was replaced before me. I'll get these parts ordered, so let's move on to the amplifier module. Let's go over my plan to service this amplifier as well as its four siblings. I'll start by replacing all nine electrolytic capacitors. The smaller ones are undoubtedly on their way out, and if they're not, they're going to fail within the next 10 years or so. These small ones are problematic. I typically don't replace these larger ones, especially if they're good quality, but in this case I will. The originals are 15,000 microfarad at 80 volts, good quality caps. So why replace them? Well, they're seeing their rated voltage all of the time, 80 volts. That's a no-no. So let's use these. They're identical in size and pinout and capacitance, 15,000 microfarad, but they're rated for 100 volts. So these will last a long time. I'm also going to replace the relay. I'm sure this is working just fine, but this has a high probability of failure down the road, and they still manufacture the identical relay. So let's get that replaced. And finally, the idle current potentiometer. This also has a high probability of failure sometime down the road. It's also only a single turn, which makes adjusting idle current more difficult than it needs to be. So let's use this 25 turn potentiometer from Borns. There's some glue holding these four caps down, as well as these two. That glue can become problematic over time, so I'll remove that as well. And if needed, I will clean and replace the thermal compound for any heat sink mounted devices. These transistors, the thermal switch, and the bridge rectifier. So let's get to it. What glue? How about that, huh? This amplifier is done. It looks great. I know it's going to perform well. Overkill? Maybe. More reliable? You bet. I did not touch the thermal compound it's still in fantastic shape. Time to get it reinstalled. The amp is reinstalled. 
I also recapped the protection board, and I'm glad I did that. Some of those caps are definitely on their way out, as I'll show you later. Now it's time for idle current adjustment. I could not find the service manual, so I'm going to use the idle current from the other amplifiers as a reference. I was getting anywhere between 10 and 20 millivolts across the output emitter resistors for these other channels, so I'm going to set this channel to 15 millivolts. I'm measuring across two 0 0.33 ohm resistors. So 15 millivolts across those corresponds to about 23 milliamps flowing through the output transistors. That seems perfectly reasonable to me. Let's check the ESR of three random capacitors, either from the protection board or the amplifier board. This is 10 microfarad at 50 volt. Should have an ESR no greater than 5. We're at 38. This is 22 microfarad at 50 volts. Should have an ESR no greater than 2. And we're at 84. And this is 47 microfarad at 100 volts. The ESR of this cap should be no greater than about 0.6. And we're at 6.3. For reference, a brand new cap with the same capacitance and voltage rating does indeed read below 0.6. Let's check the frequency response of this amp with a square wave. Very clean. Each of these five amplifiers is rated at 220 watts into 8 ohms. That corresponds to 120 volts peak to peak. At 20 volts per division, that will be six divisions. Let's see if we can hit that. It's about right there. And now we start clipping. So indeed, this amplifier can hit 220 watts. Fantastic. A few final thoughts on this Parasound. I'll be replicating exactly what I did to this first amp with the other four. On the power supply board, just underneath the protection board, there's a single electrolytic capacitor that will need to get replaced. And all five input potentiometers in the back here are pretty scratchy. Those will get cleaned as well. After that, this amp will be in fantastic shape and it will be ready to go home. Thanks for watching.